show that gets you talking. I'm your host, Xander Gibb. And I'm Ty Paul Egar. Good evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you're listening from. Good evening to you too. Coming up on today's show, we will be breaking down some of this week's hotter topics and in part two, the Osaka Report with Tony Lasaco. More to come in a mere moment. You can interact with us during the show in the chat room at the bottom of the show page. Keep scrolling down. If it doesn't let you comment, you have to join with either Facebook or Twitter. And uh, don't worry, they won't be sending you any inappropriate emails, but you might get one or two from Ty. You can call us on 347-884-9061. That's 347-884-9061. Um, the topics we're discussing are you can start your own. Tell us exactly what you think. Uh, you can also tweet us. We have all the mod cons here. My Twitter handle is at XanderGibb, X-A-N-G-E-R-G-I-B-B, capital X, capital G. And Ty's Twitter handle is at Ty Paul Egar, T-Y-H-E-P-A-U-L-E-G-A-R, capital T, capital P, capital E. And Tony's Twitter handle is at FullStory2014. Uh, that's F U L L S T O R Y two zero one four. Tweet me or Ty if you're too shy, and we will make your point for you. Uh, there's still time to vote in our poll at zandragib.com. Are you in favor of Obama's deal with Iran? Um, give us a uh, make sure you uh, join in that poll. Give us your opinion, or you can even call us to let us know. Uh, what you think about that sham, I mean that deal, uh, and we will be discussing that later on in the show. Anything else you want to get off your chest, feel free to call us, 347-884-9061. That's 347-884-9061. Uh, I can breathe for a second now. Welcome back sh- to the show, Ty. You've been away for a little while Uh Tell us about uh, which diva you went to see. No, I don't mean me, of course. I mean Bette Midler uh, in, live in London. Um, she uh, she was stunning. She didn't let us down from minute one. She appeared on stage. Um, she was just fabulous from beginning to end. She's still the Divine Miss M. She will always be. She was incredible. She was just um, she was just dynamite from beginning to end and I know there have been lots of stories about oh she lowered the, the, the notes of some songs and these songs um, let me tell you ladies and gentlemen the only song that she lowered slightly was Stay With Me and I think she, she can uh, be forgiven for that but she only lowered it very slightly but at the end of it it hit those, those notes for real and every single person in that stadium was on their feet screaming for her um, she had me in tears. I don't know how many times, and uh, you know, as you know, I was there with my uh, very close friend, my, my, my best friend, uh, well, my other best friend, darling, of course, for you, but uh, Deborah. Um, and we, I mean, tears just flowing. That uh, it was incredible. Um, so yeah, that's it. I could just say incredible all night for the next hour, but I won't. But she was amazing, and the songs. Obviously, she sang the rose, um, and it was always as always. I don't know how she still manages to make that song just as so beautiful um but she does and because how long has she been singing that song now 35 years 40 years forever and still just forever yeah and but still makes it sound 
well, but she still makes it sound like she's singing it for the first time. And and I it was just it was just a beautiful gig. It was an absolutely sensational gig. It really was. And she did. I think it was three curtain calls. She she just wow. came back every time. Because in my hands, see, and I'm not joking. I know you're going to make the joke, but anyway, we we went for a drink afterwards. Because also, if people go onto my Instagram, you can see it. Because the, the other amazing thing about that night was, um, I get I met uh, I met. You up bought with a round my, of drinks. I bought a round of drinks, yes. But I also met <laughs> up with uh, with Grace and her wife. Her, uh, her, her, but the amazing thing about that story is that Grace and I have not met each other face to face in 20 years. And Grace Where? was, what, there was myself, Grace, and uh, Vanessa, but who were the Screaming Divas. As you know, that's who, uh, who we were when, uh, when I was performing originally in London. So Grace and I had not seen each other for over 20 years. And we were actually at the same gig together and didn't realize until we both started posting pictures on Facebook uh, that we were actually, and we were only, bizarre, you know, one of those stupid stories, we were only possibly about 200 feet away from each other in the stadium. Wow. Uh, and that's how we realized. And she was driving home. And I said, oh, that's such a shame. And she called me and said, we're coming back. Where are you? And I told her where we were. And she drove all the way back. So we had a reunion. So I got to see Bette Middle for the first time in my life live, uh, wow. which I never thought I would manage to do. And, and then had a reunion. <laughs> and I had a 20-year re- a, a reunion with uh, one of the most amazing singers I've ever worked with, uh, Grace. Um, who's still around, by the way, if you're in London or the South, check her out with Decade 5. Uh, her, she, she has a great band, and Grace is always worth going to see. She has an incredible voice. But, yeah, so what Brilliant. an amazing night. With, you know. So, yeah, maybe we'll, fantastic. Maybe we'll get uh, Grace uh, on at some point and, uh, and, and see where she's at with her music. Um, I, yeah. really, I, I really am uh, kind of intrigued by this, because here's the biggest problem for me when I go to see a concert. Uh, uh, especially of someone that, you know, I really adore, were people joining in with the songs or not? Because I would find it, you know, I mean, especially if she sang In This Life, I would have to sing along. And I know that some people don't like that in the audience, but did that go on there? Uh, was it shunned? Was it, did, was it okay? What was, what was it no, like? I think not a lot, not really. Well, not where, from where we were sitting, not a lot of people were singing along. But to be fair, who can sing along with Bette Middle, for Christ's sake? But um, she was not shunning it. No, yeah, shut up. Don't stop showing off. We can, but, you know. But, no, but you and I would sort of, like, we can't sing in her key. Um, do you know what I mean? We'd be harmonizing, let's be honest. But um, but we would. But no, she was not. Stuff, not for she, sure. She was not saying, you know, she wasn't saying don't sing along. I mean, she made the joke at one point. She was saying, well, I can't remember what song it was now, but she said, but if you want to sing along, you know, don't. Um, but it was in humor. Um, right. You know, so, but she was certainly not. Um, saying don't sing along no i mean there were, and there were certainly so i mean the rose but she did and then she's done it online at every gig cause i've seen you know my friend did it as well the beautiful thing with the rose or she said i know people don't smoke anymore you don't have lighters but so everybody got their phones out and put the torch on on the torch you know on the phone and held them up and i've recorded that and put yeah. it on youtube on, on instagram as well and the stadium just looked amazing because it was just lit up by all these tiny little lights and she sang the rose it was stunning um so and you know how she i mean somebody of that caliber as well she was talking to the audience like she was just sat in her living room, you know. I mean, she was amazing. And, and she had a whole uh, Dolores Delago routine, do you know what I mean? Uh, not, sorry, not Dolores. We said goodbye to Dolores, a whole Sophie Tucker um, section. Sophie um, Tucker. Yeah, but, uh, or Soph. It's not Sophie Tucker. I shouldn't say that. It's Soph. But, you know, it's obviously based on Sophie Tucker. Um, right. Dolores Delago. We just got a video, of, 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 a montage of all the wonderful Dolores routines. And it just said, you know, goodbye, Dolores, from 1981 to 2014. So she's put, you know, Dolores has gone forever, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, bless her. She's, I mean, how old is she now? 70? I don't know. So you can only I know, yeah, she's, six, she's 69, but you would never, 69. You would never think that. No, you that. would not. But, but, I swear you would not have thought that when she, because on that stage, let me tell you, that, that lady was moving around, you know, I mean, you know, you would never, ever put her at 69. Well, look at Tina Turner. I mean, the way Tina Turner dances, and she's she's like, she's in yeah. her seventies. It, it's kind of a uh, well, kind of astounding. You know, I, mean, I hope. Oh, please, but you know, Cher, Cher knows God. I mean, Cher, Cher is seventy-seven or something, or seventy-six. Is no, no, she? Cher's, Cher's the Cher's the baby. Actually, Cher's sixty-eight. Cher's oh, the 68. baby of the three. Right. Yeah. 
But she's apparently, sadly, she's had to cancel the European leg of a tour because of, uh, you know, of exhaustion. Her doctor said you need to. But then Cher, I'm like, Cher, sweetie, why are you still trying to do the dance routines? You've got all these gorgeous guys behind you. Let them do the dance. I know, right? Job. We just want to hear you sing. Because Cher's voice, Absolutely. I mean, you listen to her latest album, she's better now than she was 20 years ago. Her voice just gets better and better and better. The woman's amazing. So... I was just, you know, I was, it was a tragedy that she'd had to do that because I was so, because I have managed, I mean, I have seen Cher before and she is sensational live. She really is. So it's such a shame that, that she's had to do that. I mean, I, I often have this disagreement with people that, that you know, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel as a singer, you know, I, I felt, feel like I was always pretty good, but 20 years on, I feel that my voice is better than it's ever been. And people say, oh, can you still reach the notes? Of course, but, you know, if I'm going to be doing any serious singing, I have to rehearse and, and get my voice ready, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, but do you feel your voice has got better with age? Um, is it that you know how to use it better? What do you think it yeah. is? That's exactly what I was going to say then, Zander. I know what to do with it now, and I know how to do it now, whereas before, you know, you when I was younger... You're voice for anyone that's just tuned I, in. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, and I can hit... Diff- actually, I can hit higher notes now, strangely enough. But... Um, right. I, but now I know, but, but I'm, I, exactly what you just said, though, now I have to, I know I am not stupid with it anymore. I know I have to warm up. Um, I don't, sh- you know, I, I'm, if, before gigs, I don't go to bars and start shouting over music. Um, I, I sing now, I, you know, I, I, I know how to hold notes now. I know why, I know how to breathe properly now, whereas before it was all, because we were young, we could just do it, but we were doing Some it. Some of us still are, wheels, sweetie. Chant, what, young, yeah, and delusional, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. but some of us are medicated and know the truth, so that's okay. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, moving, so, I'm, moving I, so my swiftly on. <laughs> so my technique, my technique is much better now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a better singer now. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Well, talk, talking of uh, singers, uh, this is a te- this is not a very good segue because this person is not a singer and does not sing. But um, <laughs> I'm going to say we're not doing the, any of In the news. <laughs> Absolutely. In the news this week, yeah, we've got a lot to get through in the time before uh, we get Tony to come up. Um, Hulk Hogan uh, has split with WWE, um, who apparently terminated their contract and issued this statement. WWE did, uh, terminated its contract with Terry Bollea, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan. Um, WWE, WWE is committed to embracing and celebrating individuals from all backgrounds as demonstrated by the diversity of our employees, performers, and fans worldwide. They removed references to Hogan from their website and have not yet given an an official reason for the removal, although most people think it's due to the comments that Hogan may have made. Now, he's been one of the professional wrestling's marquee attractions since the 1980s and recently reunited with the WWE, following a six-year absence. Now, until the removing of his landing page, and the page now reads, you are not authorized to access this page, uh, links to Hogan's merchandise in the WWE store, as well as that uh, and the articles and news things about him, uh, also go to the same dead page. His image no longer appears on WWE's Hall of Fame lineup. Uh, Hogan himself offered up a cryptic tweet as the news was breaking across Twitter and then issued his own statement, which I thought was very interesting. He said, eight years ago, I used defensive language during a conversation. It read, it was unacceptable for me to have used that offensive language. There is no excuse for it, and I apologize for having done it. This is not who I am. I believe very strongly that every person in the world is important and should not be treated differently based on race, gender, orientation, religious beliefs, or otherwise. I'm disappointed with myself that I use the language that is not only offensive, but it's also inconsistent with my beliefs. Now, he was apparently discussing his daughter and repeatedly used the N-word in a derogatory manager. Uh, and, a, and a derogatory manager, Hogan's attorney said, Hogan resigned from WWE, which would appear to be at odds with the organization's statement that his contract was terminated. So I guess my first question, Ty, is you've obviously heard about this situation, but this kind of brings into mind for me Paula Dean, um, who, who was fired from a lot of her promotional stuff because it had been revealed 
that she'd used the N-word. Now, obviously, in no way, shape, or form do we approve of that, of, of people using that in a derogatory manner. But it, it begs the question once again, should people be fired for things that they've done years ago? I mean, if my employers found out about half I'd done in my teens, they, no one would ever want to employ me. But, but let's not go there. What's your response to this type? I th- well, I was a bit confused, to be perfectly honest, because for exactly that reason, I'm kind of thinking, right, hang on, you're having this reaction about something that happened eight years ago. Right. Um, so where was The Rock at that point, Dwayne Johnson? I mean, were they not working together a long time ago? What does he well, have to say black, about all Well, he's if I'm not mistaken. Well, he's my reason, isn't he? Isn't he a New, a New Zealand, from New Zealand? Yeah, um, he's, he's not white, he's he though, like, I think so he's not, so, Well, he's not... I suppose it's, it depends what you, what you call him black as well, doesn't it? What people define themselves as black as well, because that's a, that's a very broad term, isn't it? Because I'm never keen on people just saying, "Oh, that somebody's black." I think really, well, you know, you know what I mean. Because anyway, we've had this conversation before, haven't we? About people saying, "Oh, African American." Well, you're not. You're American, or you're African. Make make your mind up. But um, yeah, let you know, let it go. Get you know, back, oh God, that's frozen, isn't it? Jesus, we'll have people on. Um, but it, so yeah, I'm with you. I'm kind of like, right, this happened eight years ago. So whoever had an issue with him eight years ago should have been taking that up. I'm not really sure what this conversation was with his daughter. I mean, was his daughter not a little bit shocked if he kept using the N-word in the, in the conversation? Or was he calling his daughter the N-word? I'm, I, I don't understand what the conversation was. I, but yeah, I don't to bring know. it up from I, eight really... years ago, to, to bring it up from eight years ago seems absolutely absurd. I think this sounds like somebody, he's upset somebody and they've just decided to, to attack him. And WWE seem to have, have kind of dropped him really quickly over this. After all the years he's worked with them and for I mean, he's made them an I know they've made him a lot of money, but he's made them an awful lot of money. This seems a really a strange thing. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... And Brenda's uh, saying, it's, sorry, just to say this, Brenda in the, in the chat room is saying, if you're not racist, you would never say anything like that in the first place. And absolutely, I don't disagree with you, Brenda. I don't disagree with anybody. I'm not saying for one moment that it would ever be okay to use that word. I've never used it in, in humour, in, in, in by mistake, I mean it's not a word you trip over. It's not a word you act. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. So I'm I'm not for one moment defending him saying it. I'm just but right. we are kind of saying what Xander and I well, well um, you know what Xander's asking me. I think what Xander's saying. You know, it happened eight years ago. It just seems a little bit strange that suddenly this is becoming controversial. It should have been controversial eight years ago, but the conversation. It just seems strange. The, the accusation seems the, the conversation that it happened in seems to be a strange accusation. He was having a conversation with his daughter. It it just seems a little bit weird. So here's the thing. Let me give you a specific example. I used to work in a bar regularly in in New York City, uh, providing entertainment. Um, And there was a very mixed clientele. And uh, some of the people that went in there were black and would say to me, they would call me the M word as a friendly gesture but i would never say that back or they'd come in and say yo nig which is like really hip uh apparently nowadays for people to say to one another but i would never obviously dare say that back not not because i'm afraid of the word but because i'm aware of its connotations and i i kind of feel that it's re- disrespectful and it kind of brings something else to mind for me. There was a there was a, an altercation uh, in the last week where a where a trans per- person was on a TV show, and there was a conservative person on the show who kept referring to the trans person as he, because yeah. because she'd formerly been a he. I think it always comes back down for me, of course, to respect. Because if you're respectful of people, you know, nobody can expect any more than that. But when you're using derogatory terminology about people or you're using terminology that people would not use about themselves, then we get into to, to sticky situations. But, but bringing up things from eight years ago and, and expecting employers to act upon that now I think it's a little bit it's a little bit worrying. It's like saying don't be friends with Xander because he used to do this or he's done no. that or he smoked and marijuana. I, and also, yeah, and I'll tell you what concerns me about it as well, Xander, is that the point being 
you're right. And also, does this mean we never, ever give anybody the opportunity to change? So maybe if he was racist eight years ago and, it, and suddenly, he, you know, not suddenly, but over those years, he's realized what, that that was a completely wrong attitude and how wrong he was. And he realized suddenly he has an epiphany or he realizes over those years that that was the wrong place to be in the world. Um, and, you know, that, that racism is, a ro- is wrong and everybody is right. equal. And he realizes that now in his life, just the way that some you know, people can change. So what we're saying now is, too bad. You, you, you're not allowed to of change. So, where, so, that, so that double, well, Brenda, hang on, it's a double standard. That, um, well, yeah, hang on a minute. Uh, um, so we're saying that people can't change. You don't have the right to change. So that's a real double standard. Yeah. I know Brenda's now Bre- saying the double just standard is that black people Brenda. use the N-word. But that, well, that's also Brenda, like, you know, the gay community, the gay community do you want to share Brenda's, Brenda's comment? Do you want to share Brenda's yeah, comment so people know what we're talking about? Sorry, yeah, it's Brenda saying it's kind of a double standard that black people can use the N-word. If it's such a bad word to them, why do they use it? Well, there are many, well, some, some would say that they try and use the word to empower, you know, empower, take the power yeah. back from it, Taking which is what the back. gay community try to do with queer and dyke and fag. And, and as far as I'm concerned, it, what it doesn't, it just diminishes you uh, as a person. It doesn't empower anybody. Um, it, yeah. and when you consider when you consider that where those words come from, um, it's a it's a place of, of shame and exactly. degradation. Um, exactly. So, but and whilst that, I would like to, I'd like to give a lot more time to this, but we've got so many more t- uh, subjects to cover. What what have you got for us today, Ty? What what did you? What's the first thing that you well, brought along? I would, well, do you know, because you mentioned it, I was, I was going to go to my second story first because we're not going to have time for the first one. And the first one was not I, really I, that important. I hoped that that was the case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so so I just, this just hit me, and I know obviously it's something close to your heart. Well, it's close to my heart as well, actually. I mean, it's a bit scary. It was Iran. Okay. Absolutely. So I took this uh, from Yahoo News today. I was, I was scanning through, and I dropped one of my others. I was like, oh, my God, really? So Iran hit out on Friday. I've taken this from Yahoo uh, News. Iran hit out on Friday against U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, accusing him of threatening military action against Tehran if it fails to respect a historic nuclear deal sealed on July the 14th. Unfortunately, the U.S. Secretary of State once again talked about the rotten rope of the ability of the U.S. for using its military force, said Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad ja- sorry, Javed Zarif in, sta- in a statement. Zarif decried what he called the uselessness of such empty threats against the nation of Iran and the resistance of the nation of Iran, and, and said such remarks should be consigned to the last century, which is kind of right. Despite the agreement reached with Iran on putting the nuclear bomb of Tehran out of Tehran's reach, several U.S. officials, including Defense Secretary Ashton Carter, have signaled that military force remains on the table to prevent Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. Kerry and other American officials have repeatedly admitted that these threats have no effect on the will of the people of Iran, and that Clearly. it will change the situation. <laughs> And it will change the situation to their disadvantage, Zarif claims. Therefore, no, this freaks me out. Therefore, it would be better for Americans to abandon their old habit and put aside once and for all the threatening language and sanctions against this great people, he added. Under the July the 14th agreement, Iran has agreed to dismantle or mothball much of its nuclear industry in return for an easing and eventual lifting of sanctions. World powers have called it a historic opportunity to settle to set relations with Iran on a new path. So, what do you think? World, world powers being, being uh, the United States, uh, the United and, States and Iran. Yes. Yeah, this, this, is, this is what I think in a nutshell. For the past 30 to 40 years, Iran has been a combatant of America, i.e. they've been an enemy. Um, and for the last 30 to 40 years, probably longer, They've threatened to annihilate us. They've threatened to bomb us. They've threatened to kill us. Um, there's, there have been lots of acts of terrorism lately. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying that they're, they're, they're down to Iran. There are Islamic militant groups that are operating like now, like ISIS, and I can't remember the other one's name, that ISIL. are claiming ISIL, thank you, that are claiming uh, responsibility for lots of these uh, terrorist uh, occurrences. Now, what really bothers me about all of this is that for as long as I can remember, Israel has been uh, an ally to the United States and to the United Kingdom. You know, it's been like a sister country to us. Yeah. And um, Iran has threatened 
for for many years to blow Israel out of the water. Now, in this historic deal that world leaders supposedly agree is is a is a step forward. Part of that is that that Iran will be given millions of dollars, which will clearly be uh, funneled into uh, paying for these kind of activities, and they will be given the components that can be used to make nuclear weapons. Now, part Absolutely. of part of the uh, agreement is that they will they will submit to um, to, ser- to searches and, and examinations of their nuclear facilities with 23 days notice. But as Benjamin Netanyahu, as the president of Israel, prime minister of Israel, sorry, said, would you give a drug dealer 24 days notice that you were coming to search their property? This is the most ridiculous and scary thing, and, and he's done a lot of them, that President Obama has ever done in his whole, in his, his whole tenure as President of the United States. Because not only does it put America at risk, and as a byproduct of that, it puts the United Kingdom at risk, and, and especially Israel, because they have been threatened. Now, there's already a problem with terrorism in this, this, this planet, and giving money and, and um, components, the, the, the components that can be used to make weapons of mass destruction, even if you're saying they're to, to be used for nuclear power, is nothing short of folly. If you threaten to shoot me, Ty, and I buy you a gun for your birthday, that's exactly what this is equivalent to. Yeah, I don't agree. Well, I don't disagree. Or at least, you know, if I threaten to shoot you and you buy me bullets for my birthday, I mean, I think that's a, a, a kind of a... a, a yeah, a similar analogy in, in that sense. That. Yeah, um, you know, but they, how how long will it take them to build the the gun? Do you know what I mean? It, it, I think it's yes, a bit, exactly. it, it's a little bit, it, it's closer to insane than not, certainly. And when I read it, I just that I was the same kind of reaction as you, and I just thought, hang on, just so just to be clear, um, we've got this huge issue with terrorism, and never mind pointing the finger at anybody. We know that there are people. It, <laughs> in, on that side of the world that are more prone to terrorism than we are. And we're going to give them the capability of, of building nuclear devices. Yay! What a great idea. When is this exactly. man getting out? When do we get this man out of the White House? Seriously. Because the sooner the better. Who knew I would ever say that about a Democrat? But the sooner get this or man me. out of power. Right. You know, I, it, it, it is. It's terrifying. It's simply because the, 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 the connotations are... Oh, God. It's just... Scary. I mean, you know, the, the the amount of things that could go. It's like a Doctor Who episode, basically, isn't it? Um, of course. And I, you know, I mean, the, the, just you know, the idea of looking into the in, in, in into the, the the time vortex. Who knows what could happen next? But simply because the the amount of things that could go wrong with this are, are the variables are terrifying. The, you know, I mean, the options are, are just mm-hmm. never ending. And but, I, I'm, you know, you, you know, I'm stuck for words. When you think about it, like like. You know when you watch Star Trek uh, On all these Star Trek shows um, They never give Technology To um, to Inferior races Because it could be used to To shift the balance of power Now I know this is not science fiction This is fact This is what's going on today But But do you think that there is some Ulterior motive with President Obama That he wants to Shift the balance of power in the area because everyone around them doesn't want it either because they're going to have a knife to their throat also. You know, uh, the Saudis have already said already said that they don't want it, and several other countries. But if if the idea is to work towards peace, how is giving nuclear weapons components working towards that? And all these years that I've defended President Obama, when people have said he's a he's a Muslim. I can't defend that anymore. I mean, he's clearly an Islamic sympathizer. He's clearly, uh, you know, uh, I referred to him recently, and lots of people said it was unfair to say, but, you know, the the Islamificator-in-chief. You can say what you want about Christians and Christianity. You can burn a Bible in Times Square, but you say anything against Islam, and he's he's, uh, he's, he's there. He's he's defending them. Yeah. And it's concerning. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what his agenda is. It's it's it, it, it's very strange. Um, 
but I'm also I'm just going to put it out there as well. I've decided he's he's welcomed the Illuminati right into the in, into the Oval Office. I think, For sure. um, you know, they're, they're up and running and they're and they're having a great time. His agenda is very very sinister, I think, and but what he's doing uh, is very, isn't it? I, I, don't, I think he's just throwing massive uh, bombs. No pun intended. I think he's throwing massive bombs out there. We're watching them go off, and there's something else bigger even. Even than that going on in the background, I think he's a very for sure. He has a very serious plan. I definitely think every every person listening to this, um, who is able to write or send an email, lobby your senator and tell them how against this you are, because because really now, you know, people have been calling for the impeachment of President Obama for long enough. I mean, they called for for Clinton for a minor discretion which which I'm not going to go into today but what does what does obama have to do for people to see that he is not good for these united states we can't defend him anymore we cannot say that all of this is because people are racist or because he's inherited a bad situation or any of these things he's just not very good at his job and all of the things that he's done that people are saying that are wonderful like the healthcare and stuff they're just a, a, a pile of SHIT because people are paying more because of this now. He's a bad president. He's worse than Nixon. And, and it's, time, it's time for the American people to take a stand before we all end up dead. I mean, do the, do the nuclear bombs have to be hitting us before we can actually stand up and say this is a bad decision? Sorry, well, sorry probably, my, yeah. Cause... Sorry for my fieriness, but... No, not at all. But I think yes, probably that will take. That's what it will take. I mean, you know, I, I, look at the movies. Isn't it really the rhetoric of the human race? Is usually it takes something absolutely appalling to happen. For sure. We are not collectors. We are not collectively that bright. You know, it, it, we're really not it, individually. No. Uh, you know, if you look through history individually, there are genius on the planet. There are very, very intelligent people on the. Collectively, we're quite stupid. Um. I mean, people, so, people have said to me lately, we should give the president the benefit of the doubt on this. This is too important to give him the benefit of the doubt. This is too important to just look away and say, you do what you feel is right, Mr. President. When you put every single American, and, 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 and as part of this I'm saying, every single citizen of Israel at risk by something of this enormity, I have to question your sanity. I mean, my friend, Dr. Gina Loudon, who is, uh, she's a qualified psychiatrist, she said, she said last year that, that he was unhinged. And nobody listened, and everything she said has actually come to fruition. Will we just sit idly by and say nothing while he gives our enemies the components to make nuclear weapons? I mean, hey, I've been criticized well, this, this week. Because I'm anti-Obama, I'm racist, I'm all of these things. I'm none of those things. If you have a defective policy, whichever party you stand for, I am going to comment on it. And that doesn't make me anything else. But consider this, right? You're saying what, how far people will go or, or how, where, how long will it take them to listen. You let, right, America left a president with Alzheimer's in power for four years. Right. For, his whole, for his whole second term, Reagan had You're Alzheimer's. You're talking about Bill Clinton. No, but Reagan. I was being sarcastic. Let me stop. I know, but how dangerous, how dangerous was Reagan? He was a, a horrible, horrible man. But I, I he think, had I Alzheimer's. Was... Nobody said anything. So why, why would they say anything about Obama? Here, have another, have another bomb. Why not? I mean, really. Well, you know, the, would the movie Dave anything? was, the movie Dave was based upon the ideology that President Reagan was um, a puppet towards the end. You know, he was just a a front person. But listen, Tony, but Tony's here now. Let me, bring, oh, okay. let me bring on uh, Tony, uh, and we'll carry on the discussion, and we'll find out what his opinion is on it. And also, uh, he's got some stuff to share with us, too. So Tony Lasaco is a broadcaster, libertarian, and a free thinker with an uncommon approach to the issues that face us every day. So please join us, giving us the full story I give you Tony Lasaco. Hi, Tony. Ah! You hear the crowd cheering? Hello. Hi, how you doing? Hello. How can are you? you? Hear me? Good. How are you, Xander? Perfectly. 
I'm fabulous. Hi, You're live on Zandermonium with myself and Ty. Um, Hi. Before we before we move on to the Lasago report, can I just can we just get your take on the the uh, the deal with Iran? I'm not sure. I got burnt on this once this week because I honestly had misinformation, so I don't know what to make on it. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to get burnt on it a second time. My initial what was your thought. Misinformation? Well, my initial thought was this is a superiority complex on America's part. Why can America have nuclear weapons in Russia enough to blow up the world several billion times over and not Iran? I saw it as quite imperialistic and quite wow. unfair of our country to tell other people, other nations, they can't have the weapons we have. I mean, it's like if I had food or a gun and I said, well, I can trust me with this, but not you. However, I was corrected on that, I must say, because... I did not know about some of Iran's statements, and I did not have all my information. And some people right. rightly informed me of um, some of the statements Iran has made and what they said they will do if they get a nuclear weapon. Well, that kind of changes the perspective on that a little bit. Um, I do kind of still stand by what I said. I mean, we do meddle in other countries' affairs way too much and impose our values on them, and that's absolutely wrong. But as was pointed out to me, when it's a national security threat to the United States, that's another story. So if they are correct in their information and saying that Iran has stated, this is what I'm being told, mind you, that Iran has actually stated that they will use a nuclear weapon against us and against Israel, well, then we need to stop them. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the concern is that that. I think you hit the nail on the head there that far too many people don't have uh the full facts uh on on this on this situation. But I do urge everybody out there to uh go and and look at uh the facts. Don't just take my word for it. Don't just take Tony's opinion, don't just take Ty's opinion. Go and check it out for yourself. Go and check what the deal entails. And and then come come back to us and, and tell us what you think because here's the thing, so many people n nowadays are misinformed. So go and check your facts. Don't just take take our word for it. So let's draw a big line under Iran and let's move to the Osaka report. What do you have for us today, Tony? Well, actually, I kind of missed a little bit, Xander. I I'm usually the one that's ranting here, and I caught what you were saying about Obama. Um could you catch me could you catch me up a little bit on why you were so passionate about that? What what is that over uh, the well, Iran nuclear deal or was it something else? Absolutely. With him being um Islam okay. It's, it's more to do with the fact that I'm concerned that that we're we're arming our our, our combatants, our enemies, and the enemies uh the, the combatants of our allies because um, Iran has said as soon as they get nuclear capabilities that they will bomb Iran, and obviously you know they will bomb um, Israel, and obviously Israel are, co are considering uh, preempting that w with a strike. You know, I'm sick of people criticizing Israel for wanting to protect themselves. Yeah, any it's wrong that anybody gets killed, so maybe nobody should have nuclear weapons. Maybe we should get rid of them all, but to give them exactly. to people who have threatened us and our allies. Is it for me is is a majorly idiotic move on 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 the on behalf of President Obama and his administration. Well, my so that, that yeah, my I'm sorry. I was, my analogy, Tony, was if if I threat it was like if, sorry if I threatened to shoot you, Tony, you would buy me bullets for, for my birthday. Do you know what I mean? It's that mm -hmm. kind of analogy with, where we were going with it. It's a little bit crazy because because certain people with. You know, are a little bit crazy, or a little bit more crazy than we are. <laughs> so you know, that ain't that the truth. <laughs> okay, so I have three things to bring to you today, and I'm going to go through them quickly because it's three things. The first is we've heard about Planned Parenthood and their use of the fetal tissue and selling it on right. the TV lately and that story. I'm sure if everybody's not familiar with it, they t an organization took undercover videos of Planned Parenthood and their people were admitting to 
in a very lovely sense, enthusiastically selling the aborted baby's body parts um, for profit. And now there, this has oh, led God. to um, increased calls for defunding Planned Parenthood. Now, yeah. the, the full story here, and I cannot believe that I'm actually defending the pro-choice people, but I stand by the name of my website, which is the full story, okay? People are being misinformed here. Number one, this has been going on for years. Abortion is legal. Number two, that's benefiting research for Alzheimer's disease. That's saving a lot of lives. You're not hearing anything about that. I mean, whether abortion should be legal or not is another story, but it is legal. And if it is legal, okay, that tissue is being given for the research to save lives. So they're taking the life in the one sense. Let me let me stop you there for one second because I just want to clarify for people that aren't aware that a video came out this week or last week even, uh, and in that video, a senior person that 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 works for Planned Parenthood was discussing how much you could buy um, organs from 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 fetuses uh, for. She was actually quoting price by price. How much you could buy a baby's heart for, a baby's liver, a baby's lungs, et cetera, et cetera. So that that is where this has come from. So sorry, Tony, I just wanted to clarify that for oh, the listeners. That's okay. I appreciate it. Now, they are calling for defunding Planned Parenthood based on this. But here is the full story, as I like to say. The people that did this video worked for years to get that video. They set them up. You're seeing edited portions, and their goal from the beginning was to defund Planned Parenthood. This has been a movement. They have been trying this for years and years in this country to stop funding Planned Parenthood. You're not hearing that end. You're hearing like what what is happening in the media is you're hearing on places like Fox News, well, let's defund Planned Parenthood because of this. No, no, no. There's organizations wholly devoted to defunding Planned Parenthood. And that was the whole right. objective here. They are they are misrepresenting this to the American people as look at this atrocity we just found. We need to take action. No, that's like the that's like the old Targaryen dialect. We're gonna create a problem and we're gonna cause an emotional response to get our way. And once again, that is not a defense of Planned Parenthood necessarily. That is not a defense of whether abortion should be legal. And I state abortion because it's not reproductive rights. That's another full story. I'm sorry, but when you are terminating a life, it's got nothing to do with the reproduction of life. Now, the pro-choice people can hang me on a tree for that, but I'm sorry. Reproduction is making babies, not killing babies. Okay. So, right. Hang on a minute. That would be the can I, Go on. <laughs> Ty, let, sorry, can I, sorry. For a second. Can, can I just come in a minute, Tony? Because bearing in mind I live in the UK, okay, so we have yes. different, different, or different terminologies. What? Why? Who's trying to stop? Pla- who's trying to stop Planned Parenthood? What's Planned Parenthood? Um, Planned I mean, Parenthood. I know what- okay. Planned Parenthood. Basically, they do a lot of things uh, for women. They're basically a woman's organization. They do advocacy, planning, and things like that, birth control. But they also have abortion clinics. So okay. a lot of American taxpayer money goes to fund the programs of Planned Parenthood, obviously, for birth control and other reasons. Not necessarily the abortions. I don't have too much information on that. So what they've been trying to do for years is defund that organization. And see, that's the lie, and that's what I object to, is them creating some new crisis that's always been around, warping it to accomplish a political agenda. So basically, abortion is abortion. Your view on it can be right or wrong. You can either be completely against it or for it or whatever. But let's stick with the facts and let's not manipulate the American people and create a crisis where there was none, especially when you've been working on a project to do undercover videos to set this organization up. It's just not right. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let Let me stop you for one second. So please don't tell me, Tony, that you're defending an organization selling 
you know, I, I see, I, I, I can almost see your point about research and things like that. But this is, this is an organization selling um, uh, baby parts. It, it, it's kind of it's, it's like something out of science fiction, really. Okay, I, I'm glad you I'm glad you asked that, Xander. No, I'm not defending that. What I right. am saying is, if you're going to attack, this was going on for years. Everybody knew about it. It it's was being used for medical research purposes. I am attacking the people that are attacking them right now for manipulating and not using the truth. The truth is very important to me, and if you want to be outraged that this organization is selling aborted fetuses to medical research companies, then you could have been outraged all along. You don't need to manufacture something, act like it's a new thing, and then create a fake crisis. It's the manipulation I am against. In fact, personally, I'm pro-life, actually. I, I, I didn't want to kind of come out and say that, but actually I'm pro-life. What I am against is, I, it, it, it's like anybody in the wrong. Two rights don't make a wrong. You don't get your point well, across I, by manipulating okay. the headlines. Well, see, right, well, part, so we're all talking. Go on, go on. We're all, sorry, I just wanted to say, because when you two start, I barely get a word in you. You're scared of people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but um, right, the thing, but you're saying you're pro-life, but I, I, so I'm kind of on two levels here, and we're three guys here. We should have, we really should have got a, a female guest in. But a woman, yes. Yeah. It's not easy for us to get guests in sometimes, and, and God help them between the three of us as well. But um, <laughs> I mean, but for a start, I mean, I'm 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 very open about this, and people know this. I'm not necessarily pro-abortion, but what I am is absolutely pro-woman. Women should ne always, 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 always have their rights, and nobody ever ever should have the control over a woman's body except that woman. Um, so I'm, that, as far as I'm concerned, is where that conversation ends. But um, as far as selling. Um, Parts of a, 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 a fetus. A Bre Sorry, Brenda, darling. Brenda's saying, "What am I chopped liver in?" Obviously, Brenda is in the chat room. But what I meant, Brenda, was somebody <laughs> actually having a voice, a vocal, a, a, a vocal voice on the show, honey. Not that you're not, <laughs> that you're not on the show. Sorry, I apologise. Um, but but you can use your voice, and we, I will happily speak for you. Um, but so anyway, so I'm with you. It kind of told me. Or you can call us, Brenda. But um, or you could call. Yeah, you could. But um, but as far as that, but selling as far as uh, as selling fetal parts now because I have a huge why I'm not pro-abortion is the age that that because even in this country I think it's right. it's, it's nearly sure. it's almost three months it's, it's shocking um, right because they Cause, we cause know the baby could live outside because, the body at three months you mean they constantly they constantly live right. at, that, at that age outside right. the body and you and they are perfectly formed as babies and that horrifies For me sure. as far as I'm concerned that's murder um, we, we, that, so I can't deal with that at all. Um, so no, the, I, I, I want to. The age, the, the wanna, limit, should, the age. As far as I'm concerned, the age limit should be lowered. But I would never, ever, ever campaign to, to take those rights away from a woman. That, that right. as far as I'm concerned, that, that debate should never be on the table. Um, but, but as far as, far as selling the fetal parts, I agree with you. But as far as science, everybody disagrees until it's a, a member of their family or themselves who have that disease, Absolutely. and then suddenly they want a cure. So you know, from that point, I'm with you on that. Uh, but if it's openly happening, then, yeah, nobody has a, a, a I, right, you know, to, to get. But they're always going to come down on the, on, the, on the abortion clinics, aren't they? But, but in actual fact, you're right. right. What they are is an educational body, are they not? If they're talking about. No. Um, so are I, they not? No, I, I mean, I think the, the, the clinics, if the clinics are talking about contraception and, and planned pregnancies, are they not educating as well? They're not just about but abortion. But abortion is not. Abortion right. should never be viewed as, con, as contraception, surely. It, you no, know, no, no, no. I'm I talking about when I think of trying to shut them down. I'm right. talking about what you know. Tony's talking about these people who are using that as a as a yeah. political stance yeah. to try and shut yeah. these clinics right. down. What they're and trying to say that is, I just want to make uh, a couple of points here very quickly before we go back to Tony. Number one, Ty, you said that you know maybe we should have got uh, a, a a woman involved with this too. But here's the thing, you know, a majority of those fetuses that are aborted are male. So I think that men do have a say in this, you know. I, I, I hate this argument that if you're not a woman, you, you don't have a say in it. I know that's not exactly what you're saying. Um, also, number two, the reason why, why this has been going on, uh, the selling of the, of the fetal body parts, um, but I don't think I've ever been able to kind of prove it before, and, and that's what's been 
uh, the turning point with this. And number three, I'm very happy to clarify my position on this uh, situation with regards to abortion. I, I always was, was pro-life and, and, and because that was a very liberal stance. And for, my, for the whole of my life, I, was, I, was, I considered myself a Democrat. But quite clearly, I'm not a Democrat. But when there are people in the world, when there are doctors in the world like Karp and, and Gosnell who will put their hand inside a woman's vagina and strangle a baby or slit its throat... I cannot, with all good conscience as a Christian or a Jew for Jesus, whatever you want to call me, I cannot hold truck with abortion. Well, no, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, that, that, that's not abortion, it's murder. That, that's not getting rid Wait. of cells in a body. That, that, that's killing a child. Um, well, so that, to me, that, you know. Uh, Tony, maybe, thing you could, I wanna... maybe you could just go on, go on. I just want to bring it back to what I was saying because I don't want it to sidetrack to an issue of abortion, right or wrong. The thing is, this group, they presented their video, they didn't give both sides of the story, and they acted as if this was a, they acted as if, let's defund Planned Parenthood now because of this, when their goal has been for years to defund Planned Parenthood. So my problem right. with it is the deception and the manipulation of public opinion and that's what I wanted to point out because it's a group. It, it is meant to manipulate public opinion and not tell the full side of the story. If we want to have an honest debate about whether we should be doing barbaric things like that, that's one story. But let's not create and make like something just happened overnight. And oh, we have this new information now. We have to do this when the goal was originally to do that. For, they've been working on defunding Planned Parenthood for years since the 70s, I think, actually. Right. Well, no, absolutely, you're right, because it's just that propaganda and misinformation again, isn't it? And the danger is what they're actually doing, by, by that kind of misinformation, they're actually putting more women or young girls in danger because it's that kind of misinformation that causes the fear. People turn away from the real information and knowledge and end up in more trouble as well. It's just, it's, it's a loop, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think you're right. And, and, and Tony, whilst I don't want to turn this into a debate about abortion, unfortunately, it, it, it's an issue that, that comes up as a byproduct of, product of it, because you can't have fetal <laughs> body parts to sell without actually murdering a fetus in, in, in the first place. I just wanted to come to a point quickly because Brenda uh, mentioned it in, in in the chat room, and you know we like to give the chat room a, a fair mm -hmm. uh, a fair crack of the whip, as it were. She said she said what if, what if the person what if the person is is raped? Now, as Tony said, this is not really a debate about abortion, but I want to talk about that just for a minute, just just to make sure that Brenda is included. What if the person is is raped you know is 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 abortion still wrong or is it right or is it okay or is it up to the individual what what do you think about that tony i think that it is a sidetrack of the issue once again i go back to the full story the percentage of women being raped having abortions is not and i don't have a statistic to back me up but i promise you i could find them compared to the number of women that actually just have abortions for the unwanted child. It's a sidestep, right. and it's another distraction from the real issue, which is you are taking the inalienable right, the, con the Declaration of Independence, I I'll, 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 sit, I'll go along with you on this, Xander, says every human being has the right to what? Life, right. liberty, and right. the pursuit of happiness. Well, when you are and, terminating and your life, right. <laughs> you are doing that. Well, I suppose where the problem comes in is this argument about where life begins. I mean, I personally believe life begins at conception, but some people believe that life begins when the fetus could survive outside of the body. And as Ty quietly said, quite rightly said, um, some babies that are born at three months are able to survive and are able to breathe outside of, of the womb. And this is, this is a very controversial subject, and it's not something we will ever uh all all agree on but i i think it i think it's important to note that that everybody's ideology is changeable 
with regards to this issue because because a couple of years ago I was 250 percent pro a uh, pro choice. Um, but after after all this that went on with right. Carpen and Gosnell, which really disturbed me, I, I'm totally against it. I really am totally against it for any reason, and 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 that's just my uh, opinion. So, what's your next topic? Uh, <laughs> 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 so much for a quick discussion on that one. Oh, for sure. My next, yeah. my next topic is on gun control. We have heard about the shooting. Um, for those who aren't aware, there was another mass shooting. Two people are dead, and or is it three people now in Tennessee um, right. at a movie theater, and we're hearing the same statements from the same groups all over again about gun control. And the debate is what would happen with, with a gun, without a gun? Do we do anything with gun control? And I just want to say rehash what I said on a previous statement with this. We had first the military base, okay? And that is an absolute disgusting disgrace that somebody that is in the office of President of the United States took five days to half-mast the American flag in honor of those veterans who gave their lives Amen. fighting for our country, and that is an so, outrage. Are you a racist, <laughs> Tony? Are you saying that because the president is black? No, I am not saying that because the president <laughs> is black. I'm saying that he right. disgraced the office. He actually disgraced the office of the president of the United States by taking sure. five days to do that, and that was outrageous. But that's a side note. I just wanted to get that in there. As far as gun control goes, we need to have a serious discussion. I had said on your program after the other group of shootings, why can we right. not – Forget about background checks for a while. Why can't we mandate that anybody that's purchasing a gun have a mental health screening and a drug test? I, sure. 90% of these cases are mental health issues. This background issue debate needs to stop. It's a sidetrack and it's a falsehood. It's not the criminals that are going out committing these crimes. It's people like you and me who snap and go out. People, right. we need to require a mental health evaluation of someone before they purchase a gun. And for those screaming about the Second Amendment, I am for your Second Amendment rights. You can carry right. a musket with powder all you want, because that's in the Declaration of Independence, if you serve in the National Guard, which would be a militia. But if you want to get technical about, about the constitutional rights of the Second Amendment, it was written for muskets and for people who were serving in the National Guard. Absolutely. And that's the Tony, whole story just... with that. Let me just say you something. Know, you, we've been doing this show for nearly three years, and in its infancy, we've, we've always done shows on gun control. And is this not something we have been saying since this show's infancy, that mental health assessments are imperative uh, for, uh, for people to carry a gun? Yes. But you know what? Well, actually, the easy thing... Cool the easy thing fun. The easy thing to oh, do no. as well. I, I knew Ty will, and I knew Ty wanted to say something, so I was waiting for I know. him. Sorry, Ty. Fire yeah. away. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, did you get that, Xander? He was waiting for me. <laughs> um, the, the, the thing, uh, no the thing actually, do you know what? It would be it would be even easier than than a mental health test. A faster test would actually be a stress test or a psychometric test, because if you look at a lot of these people. Clearly, I mean, the young people especially, you can see very easy. Obviously, there's, there's depression there and mental health. It's usually um, uh, um, so affective disorder, or it looks that way. But a stress test would be really easy. And I don't mean for the gun, you know, the gun shop, the gun sellers. Actually, a stress test for the doctor would be really easy. Because a lot of these people, if you look at, it, it's, it's a psychological, it's a breakdown. And it's a very quick breakdown. And it's been a build-up over years. And that's what's done it. And they've just gone. It's a very quick fl switch flick that's happened but then all that devastation is caused and you're right Tony the problem is and obviously Xander talked about it before you guys live there but I mean we see it I suppose it might even be easier because we see it from the outside whereas you're, you're living in it but from our, when we look from the outside in it's really obvious that, that you know when you just hand anybody a gun the problem is when you handle it and it becomes it just becomes another uh, digit um, it, it becomes it, it's, just, it's nothing it, you know, it, it's not even. I don't think people are even aware of the devastation it causes when they fire it. 
Now, understand, well, I, and I want to give the listeners a full understanding of this. I am as, if anybody's listened to your show prior and heard me rant, I am very, very libertarian. I can't tell you how difficult it is for me to call for a government control and a regulation as a right. libertarian. But when the safety and security of people's lives are at stake, the intention of the founding fathers and the right specified, and somebody's got to use some common sense and realize we didn't have AK-47s when they wrote that document. And and no. furthermore, no, I want to yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say when that when that was first written, the most lethal weapon around was a musket. And I don't know. I don't. You know, I've had to research this a lot because because where guns are concerned, I was a total dummy. But but ev- uh, but 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 uh, even normal pistols are, are usually semi-automatic now, I believe. Yeah. Yes, and it, it's. I just don't understand. Well, well, one thing I should point out. See, you have not heard one politician yet. And correct me if I'm wrong. And if I stand to be corrected, I'd love for somebody to name the politician or the congressman who has proposed a new gun control where it's a mental health or a stress test, like Ty stated, and there's a reason for that. Because once again, the full story isn't coming out. Because the same gun control, the same gun companies and manufacturers that give to the Republicans, I've got news to you, they line the Democrats' pockets too. So it's easy for for the Democrats to say, I'm for for gun control and background checks. They know background checks aren't going to do S-H-I-T. And that's why they're sidetracking the issue. They don't want real reform or something that's going to make a difference. They want to politically pander and line their pockets. We need to have a serious conversation about what will work. Tony, Brenda wants to know if you have an inside voice. Do I have an inside <laughs> voice? Well, I do, but I, we're, we're, I'm currently not in the bedroom. He's, Maybe after this. He's but... pas- oh, oh. That, that's okay. a totally different show. He's passionate like the rest of us, Brenda. So we're, we're coming to the end of it, but I don't. I really don't want to leave it there. But I, but but I can't. We can't go on. But what? Let's let's sum this up. What is going to make a difference? Is this a gun control issue or a people control issue or both? Let's 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 go to you first, Ty, very quickly for a very brief summation of your opinion. It's a people control. A gun can't pick itself up and kill you. It's a, it's always people. It's we. It does right. do the damage on every level on this planet. It does do the damage. For sure. Tony. Um. I- Absolutely. It's not the gun that kills people. It is the people that kill people, which is why we need to make sure that a weapon is in the hands of responsible people that know how to use it. It's just simple common sense, America. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think that if all sides could actually concede a little, and we've always been able to get a little consensus of opinion on this show if all sides in the argument just took a step back and actually looked at this the, there there is a, some compromise but if you're not prepared to deal or give a all then really what is the point you have been listening to Xandermonium we are now at the end of the show Tony tell people where they can find you on social media you can find me on YouTube on the full story and on Facebook at the full story, those are I make the YouTube videos. I will be posting one about the topic I did not get to, which is the people that desecrated the body of the Confederate soldier and are taking it upon themselves to dig up his remains nearly because he Absolutely. was a Confederate soldier and slave owner. So Astounding. that's going to be my next topic. But um, you can find me on YouTube ranting about that or on Facebook ranting about that. Absolutely, and 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 he'll always be ranting about it because he's compassionate and he he is passionate and he cares. I'm sure he's compassionate too. Uh, Tony, <laughs> um, for now though, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you check out Tony Lusako. Make sure you go and have some civil discourse with him. Tony will be back with us very soon. He is an ongoing contrib- contributor to, to, to Sandemonium, and we welcome his opinion. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. It's off to the bedroom. See you. Bye.
<laughs> Moving swiftly on. Uh, well, that is all we have time for. Thanks to my fabulous co-host, Ty Paul Egar. Tell them where your um, website is, Ty, so they can check you out and uh, yeah. see a little bit more about what you're about and what you're doing. Yeah, you can find everything about me. You can find on www.tpegar.com. That's where my Twitter, you can follow my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Vine, everything. So www.tpegar.com. Or Glasgow Police. Glasgow <laughs> Police. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, I love you all. Ty's going to be away for a few weeks because he's got school to be dealing with, uh-huh. but he will be back with us, and we'll be uh, contributing a little bit, um, but we'll be taking a little bit of a back seat while he finish it, finishes his uh, his examinations. He'll tell you more about that next time. When I'm back. Uh, so, so tell everybody how much you love them, because they're going to miss you, Ty. No, I am. It's going to be really, really strange, and I'm sorry I have to go away for a while, but as Andy said, it's true. I have exams coming up. How old? 48 years old, I've got exams. It's ridiculous. But I have a lot yeah. of studying to do, and I have a lot of work to do. So Xander is very kindly let me have some time off um, to do it. But I will be back, and I'll be popping in and out when I can. Um, and I'm still producing the show and things, or co-producing, I should say. So I'm Absolutely. not going too far away. But um, I'll still be on and, uh, Twitter and, and no... things. There's no truth in the rumor that you have a, a, a three-month custodial sentence to, to serve as there. <laughs> no. Sadly, I might absolutely. get a man. I mean, you never know. There you go. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you want to be back know. behind that refrigerator, don't you, Ty? Well, that's it uh, <laughs> for us from today. Before we get any deeper into the frivolity, this song yeah, that we're going to play out one. with is by the easy out. It's called I Ain't Got Nothing. I will be back with you very soon, and Ty will be back in a few weeks. <laughs> around. 